Hey, what's happening guys? Today we're gonna to talk a little bit about this module here. This is the four digit seven segment LCD or LED display. And it is using, let's see if we can get that to focus. The TM1637 driver. Now this is a pretty cool little display and it only takes four wires. You have a clock, a data, VCC and ground VCC is five volts in this case. So it's uh, compatible with any Arduino you might have. Now for our demonstration here today, what I've set up is basically a little clock. I'm using the uh, DS3231 real time clock and a Nano. So we have let me zoom in here. The five volts from the display to five volts and the ground to ground. And we have, um, let's see, orange or red is clock. Okay. So I have the clock going to digital two and the data going to digital three. Now the DS3231 is a uh, I squared C, so A4 and A5. I mean, that's pretty simple setup. Give you a good idea of how this thing works. Let's go take a look at the code and then we can come back and check it out in action. And you're gonna see it's uh, really simple to use. Okay, let's take a quick look at this code for the seven segment four digit display. Very simple. Uh, first of all, the library TM1637 can be downloaded from this link right here. All right, let's include our libraries. We need the DS3231 for the clock. We need the wire library for the clock and we need the TM1637 display library for our display. Now we have two defines. The first one is clock two and DIO three. That is telling us we have the clock on pin two of the Arduino and the DIO on pin three. Next, we have a couple library calls. We're gonna create an instance of the DS3231 called clock. And we're gonna create an instance of the TM1637 display called display with the arguments of clock and DIO, which we just set right here. Now we're just going to declare some global variables for the clock. And we go to our setup. We begin our I squared C communications. We begin the serial for our debugging. And we're going to set the brightness to the maximum brightness, which in this case is 15. OX 0F is 15 in hex. Now our void, our loop, our main loop for the program, we're going to start by getting the time. So that is clock.getTime. And according to the library, it says it's best to just grab the whole thing, even though we're not going to use it. Now, you see we have our hour and our minute as separate variables right here. They're bytes, actually. So we need to transform them into a single integer that can be printed to the display. Now this is just my way of doing it. I'm sure there's probably a better, easier way, but this is pretty simple. So we begin by creating a string called my time and it equals string of the variable hour plus string of the variable minute. So now we have them in a string and we need to convert them into a single integer. So we say integer my time integer equals my time dot two integer. So it's taking this string here and converting it to an integer. Yeah, pretty simple. This was my debugging to make sure everything was working correctly. And now these next two lines here are where we print the time and we're going to do it with the colon on and off. So this command here display dot show number decimal ex. This function allows you to print the number with the colon on and then display show number decimal is with no colon. So we say display show number decimal ex my time integer. So that's our number. 
and then this is the bit mask for the colon which is uh, hex 128 bit shifted to position 1 we do want leading zeros our number is four digits long and the most significant digit is at the left then we're going to wait one second and we're going to display show number decimal my time integer which is the time leading zeros four digits long most significant bit to the left and we're going to wait a second so what this will do is it'll be decimal on for one sec or colon on for one second colon off for one second and that'll give us a nice effect that's it let's go look at it all right here we are all powered up and good to go you see we have our blinking colon indicator you see the minutes just changed so this is a nice little unit it's about two inches long by one inch Hi. Um, my only complaint would probably be the fact that they have the pins coming out this way, but that's easy enough. You could um, desolder them and solder them on again from the bottom, so not a big deal. This would be useful, you know, for making little clock displays or temperature displays or timers, you know, whatever you don't need more than four digits for. It's a nice little unit, cheap enough. That's about it. Hope you guys enjoyed this. If you did, give me a big old thumbs up. And uh, if you would, give me some help to grow the channel. Take the, my favorite video that I've produced and uh, share it somewhere for me, please. On a blog or another website or a forum or something. I'd appreciate it. Y'all have a great day. Bye.